offer um, that we um, accept what is done is done. Um, what that means is that the city council has the authority now to make any decision that they want. Um, and it's our responsibility as staff to provide the information for you to make the best decision possible. Um, we must gather, present, and discuss all relevant options. We must have transparency and community engagement moving forward. Uh, we agree that the true cost of operating the facility must match or exceed the community's interest. It must be justifiable to the city residents. Um, we agree that City Council needs to make a final decision on the future of the community center and a decision on whether to accept grants. Um, what we would like to do, I think it was very successful in the last workshop, is to adopt this workshop format where staff will start off with a presentation on the information that you've requested. Um, then City Council will have an opportunity to ask questions um, and, and staff will provide answers, um, open up for some public comments, and then we will uh, present what's going to be on the next agenda, um, and then City Council will do a wrap-up on the, on the worksheet. Um, the next part is some of the items, and definitely want to hear from um, City Council if there's a, additional information, or maybe they don't want to, for us to, to gather some of this information. Um, it's totally up to City Council. Um, but the very first part um, to it is, uh, and, and there's been a number of discussions and some questions regarding the actual grant and terms in the grant, um, and whether some of them can be modified or not. Um, so that's our first item, and we're fortunate enough to have somebody um, here with us tonight who is actually a North St. Paul resident um, who works for DEED. And so uh, Rodney Robbins is here to um, answer any questions that City Council has um, regarding um, the grant itself. Um, and there can be points of clarification. I know that uh, it's been discussed a number of times on the 37.5 years of the grant term. Um, and there's been other clarifications and or modifications that maybe City Council has been considering. So I'm going to turn this over uh, to Rodney and uh, we'll uh, give the City Council an opportunity to ask some questions. Thank you. Good e evening, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Well, nice crowd here. I didn't quite expect this, but... Um, I guess Toastmasters is going to pay off this time. <laughs> but yes, I'm here from Deed, and I'm here to answer any questions related to um, the terms of the grant. Um, when you were mentioning the 37.5 years, sometimes that is a little bit misleading. Reality, it's 20 to 30 years is the max when it comes to it. And basically, when we talk about the 20 to 30 years, um, for the terms within the grant, it's meaning if what's in legislation of fixing up the center that we're staying within doing everything that we're talking about within the legislation or, or the enabling as we call it, um, it'll be a situation where like today I'm here to kind of see and then once you start doing the construction to the outreach, outreach center, or community center, sorry, um, we see those changes once it's completed. Um, one of the key things um, when it comes to this is we're making sure that nothing goes, everything goes according to plan. So in other words, and I'm a resident of North St. Paul, so I'm pretty close by, but we don't come back and there's a car dealership, Toyota, selling cars off the lot where the money was attended for the community center. So those are some of the things that we want to just make sure that the money is used. In most cases, what it's going to be is a reimbursement system. So once you're paying for the construction or whatever, renovations, permits, and all that good stuff, um, once you're approved for the full funding, just send that invoice in to me, and then I'm going to make sure it gets reimbursed directly to the city. Um, 
It's kind of a, um, just looking over the legislation right there, because it's showing that you're looking at design, construct, renovation, furnish, equipment improvement um, for the betterment of the community, community outreach facility, as well as improvements to track school activities improvements and also the multicultural community. So all of those things are in legislation and that's what we want to provide the money to make sure that all those things are accomplished. Any questions? All those things on the list? Yes, <clears throat> correct. Rodney, can I just have you it comes from the speakers up above. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I just have you pause for a second, take sure. a step back? We have a lot of people in the audience. We've got a lot of people. Can you just talk about what DEED is, what, the, what, it, what it stands for? It's a four-letter acronym. Absolutely. Um, and just kind of bring everybody up to speed first. That would be awesome. Absolutely. Well, let me see. Uh, you can hear me. <laughs> yeah, you can hear me. Okay. I wanted to make sure because my back is turned. DEED is the Department of Education and Economical Department. And what we do is we take care of all, all types of, I work with special appropriations, which is projects that may come around maybe once every 30, 40 years, something to that magnitude. So a prime example would be, I've dealt with a lot of stadiums or um, museums, for example, will go ahead and fix everything up ex exactly what they want in their appropriation or their legislation, and then we turn around and make sure all that stuff is done. We see the beginning, and then we see the end result, and then that's it. So you're a project manager with that role? I would say I'm more of a grant coordinator okay. would be my description my job description. So the key thing is when you want something to be improved, I'm going to just make sure I see the beginning and then I see the end and then I'm pretty much out of your lives and we can move forward. For clarity, you were saying for turning in um, invoices for reimbursement, yeah. is that as you go through the project or one time at the end? What's it's as you go. Once you start collecting invoices, send them to me. Great. The key thing that we want to do is uh, there's an application um, process, and I did send that to you earlier. And once we fill that out and we get everything organized, after that it's pretty much smooth sailing because then on my end I would send it to who we call MMB, which is Minnesota Management and Budget, and then they're the ones that are going to release the funds for reimbursement. Hi, Ronnie. Thanks for coming. Um, you had mentioned that it's reimbursement. So what does the turnaround time look like when we submit an invoice? Well, once we get everything situated and approved, once you send that invoice to me, because what's going to happen is once everything is approved, you're going to get something to be signed off either by Brian, I believe your name might be on there, and maybe the mayor. You two would probably be too the two people that would sign off on the final um, grant, uh, grant agreement. And then once that's done and it's given back to me, I'm going to send it to MMB, Minnesota Management and Budget. And then from that point, once you start sending invoices, we're good to go. And the turnaround, I've seen it within a week to two weeks, maybe three weeks. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. When they look at the reimbursement, is there a list that starts? You know, is there different items that they just pick off then when they get the invoice type of thing? Is, it, uh, is there any kind of sign off as far as if that's okay? Is that you have a check mark up? That's part of the project. That isn't. Is there any gray areas you have to worry about? Correct. Um, what's going to happen is on that application that I had sent uh, Brian earlier, it's going to break down what's part of your legislation. So 
And this one I'm looking at is construction, maybe design, equipment, and some of those um, items that are on the legislation. You're going to put them in your budget. Like, okay, we've met with an architect, so we know the design is going to be 200000 the construction, we met with construction department that's going to be doing the building. They're going to be another million, we'll say. So once you set that budget up, when you're sending those invoices in, because I'm sure each one of the different areas is going to start sending their invoices, even though they're not done with the project, then you're sending them to me. And then I'm going to, have a sheet, uh, I'm going to send you what we call an RPR, which is a reimbursement form. And what it's going to do, it's going to track every single invoice that you sent me that's going to subtract from that amount. Like, again, if construction was 200000 well, 200000 will say, you send me an invoice for 50000 okay, it's going to push it off to the side, 150, so it tracks for you as well as me until we're down to zero on each category. Well, the city may go ahead and pay for it right off the bat, but once you have the invoice, I'm gonna, we're reimbursing you, your funds right back. And I've seen it a couple of different ways because I've also been on the other side where I used to send grants into deed and get the reimbursements. There were some cases where, actually it was most cases, it was direct deposited right back into the bank account. And there's options to cut checks too. It depends what, however you want it. I was just curious how liquid you have to be to you know, do this stuff for the rest of the reimbursement. Because I looked to see it. I didn't see reimbursement on this at all. But maybe I missed it or something. It's more in the beginning. We're in the beginning stages right now. Because there's going to be a lot more information that's going to come to you as we get started. Rodney, collectively as, as a council, we haven't had the opportunity to go through the entire document okay. from the state that, you know, one of the th key things that did pop up was, you know, the 37 and a half years, and thank you for providing clarity that 37 really doesn't mean 37, it means, so as we sit down and go through this, um, go through the document, we're going to have a bunch of questions, Absolutely. Um, and we'll have challenges, um, looking for clarity, does that, who does that go back through? Does that go back through you? Does that go back, it does? Yes, um, that's part of my job is to okay. work you all the way through until we're at the point where we're ready to move on and get full funding and we're ready for reimbursements. Okay, because there was some wording in there and I'll just pick pick one of them out that I think that it states that uh, the state legislator can, can the legislation can use the building you know, basically at any any time they need or want, you know, again, there's no parameters around it. We don't know what that means. We don't know if that would, does that mean that they just want to have a meeting there for two hours in an afternoon, or does that mean they're going to take the facility over? Um, so those are some of the questions that I would anticipate coming back from a collective group. No, it's more or less whatever you guys are going to use it for. It When we think about the legislation and them taking over, it's not them taking over. It's just more or less we're to the point we just want to make sure the money is used correctly because, you know, as you know, there's been businesses out there that have not done right. So it's just a way of kind of covering. Thank you. So circling back to that, when <clears throat> when you said essentially – not using the funds to create a car dealership <laughs> right there. Okay. Yep. So one of the questions early on was we tried to do um, some calculation to find out what the building might cost us moving forward. Mm -hmm. So we used the formulas that any professional does. But I'd called Deed and they said to me that uh, normally they look at the useful life of a building anywhere from 25 to 35 years. Mm -hmm. So. I took that right down the middle at 30 years, and it says you need to use that building for 125% of its useful life, and that's where we came up with that 37 years. So even if we back it down to 20 years, now we're looking at 25 years, then it would have to be run as that community center, correct? Yes, 25 would be fine. The, the thing about it, and I'm a finance guy, that's my background, 
When I first read that, because I've actually been with Deed for now a little bit over two and a half months, it was confusing to me. It's like 37 years. Okay, this doesn't make a lot of sense. And then when I actually did my first grant, I just said, mm -hmm. okay, well, I'll leave it alone. It's right there in the writing. And I sent it, and then they sent it back. No, it should be 30. Okay, that mm -hmm. makes a little bit more sense because I, when I think of a house note on a loan or something like that, I'm thinking 30. Where did 37.5 come from? So, mm -hmm. yeah, I can't explain. They should, probably should take that out. Okay, it's clarity. Thank you. Yes. How many is included to make it so it needs to be? I mean, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of different ways you could go about it. Do you do them? I mean, I come from, from the you know, private thing for me when there's a contract, the contract is what you follow. Mm -hmm. And is that what, the way it is with the, with the state? Because there's, I mean, you look at that, there's about five, six <coughs> options. Yes. And they're all there. Yes. Well, this is. Um, from whoever your representative was, I guess this is some of the things that somebody probably talked to them about on what you wanted done. So when they brought it to the governor and because we had the surplus, it's like, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. And I don't know how the total 4.5 million came up, but that's what's being requested. So if the project itself is let's say five million, then we would support you with 4.5 million and another 500,000 the city would. I get the part about the building, the part okay. of what we're gonna use when it's in there. There's, there's about five different things. And mm -hmm. is, there, is there, do we have to choose from that? I mean, that's where I'm trying to understand because we have the seniors, we have the mm -hmm. gardens, we have, I mean, just about different things. How does that look? Is there just a majority of it? I mean, because we have to operate it underneath the rules of of what that grant is, is mm -hmm. every single thing of a grant? Well, it would typically be every, we're going to try to oblige by everything that you want in this grant, in the legislation. Yes. Well, if that's what you're going to go for, I would say yes. Um, what happens is if you change it on how you want to run it, this is what we will supply you for. But if you don't necessarily use something, I mean, we're not going to see how you're going to, you know, if you allow seniors to do whatever, that we're not going to monitor. <coughs> Yeah. No, I mean, no. So, I mean, it is, it's a very vague statement, but I believe that in that statement, you can do all sorts of things. That's why it's so vague. Um, so if you want fitness equipment, you're going to get the fitness equipment. You don't have to have it. To, say you take that fitness equipment and you put it towards the HVAC replacement. So, I mean, it's just, it's a very vague uh, document, but it's meant to be vague. I mean, for example, we talked earlier today and, uh, we had talked that uh, we had our architect here the other day talking and reevaluating those numbers, and they kind of went up. I said, maybe, well, one example, let's just say you didn't have enough money. If you went forward with the project, but you didn't have enough money to put solar panels on the roof, would we be gigged for that somehow, or would that be um, in fault? And he, he said, no, that we'd, you'd still be able to make the program without right. if you, that was in there. Because the thing is, if you want solar, solar solar panels up on your roof that's totally up to you otherwise if you you know got regular shingles we're not gonna judge you on that that's totally up to you my, my thing is you know we, that document says what we're going to do with the building do we have to follow you know i'm not talking about the mm -hmm. modeling stuff like that but right it's, it's going forward for that years number of years what does that have to provide does it provide everything that is on that list, or we can decide as we go along, or we just have a certain one or two things. It's uh, I've never been a contract where it's been mm -hmm. wide, wide open. Now it's now we have to guess. It feels like to me what what we really right. 
I would say that this contract is more or less, these are some of the, these are the items that you wanted to improve or construct. So they're in the legislation for you to do. If you choose not to do one of them, you know, that's going to be totally up to you. That's what I want to make sure is up yep. to us. Yep. Because that's where all of a sudden it's done. It's like, no, you said this, you said that, you said yeah. this. No, it's, it's yeah. It's, you turn around and hit wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just saying that those are the options that you chose to go with. Because, say, for example, you know, if you do the roof, the HVAC, the community center, and that right there was over $5 million. Just take the 4.5 and do the few things that you're going to do. You know, we're not going to. Another question that came up was, um, so for, let's just say we use the 20 years and then 125 or percent of the useful life of that was then be 25 years. It's hard to say what's going to happen in the future. What happens if you get 10 years down the road, five years down the road, and something tragic happens or it doesn't work out? You know, is the state looking to have that money all go back to the state or I, I, worst case scenario? I just didn't know what something like that would look like. Well, if you started the project and everything was going, because you're saying 10 years down the line. Like well, they're saying that you need to use that building for what is in there for wording for 125% of the useful life of that building. So if we're using 20 years, that's 25 years. Well, let's say we're in there 10 years, 15 years, but then all of a sudden there's some serious issues with finances uh, for whatever reason, and you can't continue to run it, and you need to shut it down because it's just not economically feasible. What happens on something like that? That will probably go back to legislation, but I don't think that would be something that you guys would have to worry about because the key thing is with this, you're using a lot of your money up front, and we're just reimbursing. So 10, 15, whatever years down the line, um, if something, I guess, tragic happened, you know, I would probably start with your representative, and then they would probably speak upon the situation. Worst come to worst, they'll just probably shut it off from there. But I'm not 100% sure because yes. I've never seen anything like that or heard anything like that. So, But if it did happen, I would start with uh, your representative. Things have changed the way we think now with pandemics and stuff like that, so you just never know. Well, part of it, too, is we haven't had it open as a community center for many years, so now we're bringing it back up. So, In order to effectively um, accept this grant, if it's decided to, could you speak to timelines of when you would need things? I was speaking with Brian earlier. Um, the key thing is we would like to get the application started. And the application, as well as the pre-ward risk assessment that I also sent him, if we get those two things and we're 80% of the way there. The longest piece on the application is going to be the budget, um, depending on how, setting up how you guys want to put money where it's going to be focused on for reimbursement. So that's probably going to be the longest part of the process. But once we get everything else, um, it's going to then turn back over to me where I'm going to write up the grant agreement. And then um, that's going to be sent to MMB, Minnesota Management and Budget. And then they're going to send out an email back to me to send back to uh, Brian or John. And from there, it's just your signature. And then we're all about reimbursing at that point. And that's usually, again, a week to three weeks. But more to that point, do we have a month to figure everything out to submit this? Do we have six months to figure all this out? You technically. Because it started as of June 2nd, 2023, you usually have about four years from that point. 
but we usually try our best to at least get the application stuff going as soon as we can, just so um, there's no last second, you know, trying to scramble to get everything to go through. Like, for example, if we get things going and say, for example, you guys have the construction crew coming in and you're getting invoices and things are ready to be paid, but on my end, I'm just getting it, and then we got to push it out three weeks, worst-case scenario, three, four weeks. So that's why I would suggest, or my recommendation is to try to get the um, application in as soon as possible. But technically, if you want to have a timeline, you technically have four to five, four years. But I would try to get it in a little sooner. Rodney, can you speak a little bit to the pre-risk assessment? Yes. Pre-risk assessment is just something to, it's a document that kind of has, It kind of has the back of the of deed and the state, and what it is is it's almost like doing a background check in a sense, and it just sees how um, the city of North St. Paul operates, how um, for example, your accounting systems and stuff like that, just to see how that works, and just have a background on the city and what it does is sometimes when you're doing that if a red flag comes up you know like you defaulted on a loan or something like that it doesn't mean you're still not going to get the grant but it just kind of lets us know where things stand so that's probably it a fast answer for that thank you that's helpful mm -hmm. Do you guys have any more questions at this point? We can continue on with the PowerPoint if you'd like. Rodney, I just want to thank you for being a resident and for showing up. Um, I think you addressed a lot of my questions. Um, Brian, keep them on speed dial because I know we'll have a, this group will have a lot more questions going forward. So um, it was awesome to have you here, and I hope it's not the last time we have you here because I know we have a lot of questions. So thank you. Thank you. And like I told Brian, I'm technically, literally, right around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have council two times a month. <laughs> First and third Tuesday. Okay. Workshops are from 515 <laughs> to 6, and we start council at 6. So we'll see you here. Thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. Appreciate it. it is, is it acceptable if uh, staff asks a few questions of clarification oh, yeah. on the? Yeah. Please, please. 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 Okay. Um, so just a higher level component to it, I mean, uh, could this be used for a different site? And if so, is there a process that would have to get legislative approval to be able to do so? Yeah, because I believe this one was for the 2300. Yes. Yeah. So if you want to go somewhere else I would, or a different location within North St. Paul, you would more than likely have to, you would have to go ahead and um, speak with your representative and see what you would like to plan for that other site. And then pretty much right up the same thing, what do you want to do? Yeah. So it would be in the legislation. And, and then <clears throat> there's section 3.03 .03 that talks about the proceeds of a sale. I'm assuming that's during the duration before the expiration of the 25 years. Um, and it states in there that uh, we would end up having to pay the full entire grant um, back. Um, and if not, uh, then they can, um, uh, I believe, withhold um, disbursements that may come to the state. In other words, other, uh, it infers other state aids mm -hmm. um, that could come there. Is, is that for the full amount, or is there a prorated amount for the number of years that it was actually utilized? Because you said a sale? Yeah, if there was a proceeds you, of a sale. Like if you were to sell the property. Yep. Before the expiration right. of the... Right. Um, it would end up being 
what I might have to get back to you on that one. That one, um, I, yeah, I read the grant, but that was something that was never brought up. I would have to double check on that one. I'm not quite sure. And then as we move forward, um, obviously the um, city would enter into um, use contracts potentially. And there's a section on use contracts. How stringent is the state on some of the language that they have? Well, when it comes to use contracts, it's more or less who is going to use it. We understand the city is going to use it because you're the city, but um, I'm trying to think of when I think of use contracts, I think of like a stadium, like a semi pro team. Mm -hmm. A stadium might be used for high school basketball, but now this semi pro team wants to use the area. So that's a use contract because their season is going on. Um, when it comes to the city, I can't think of what you guys may do with, with the exception with the community center. That's going to be with the gym. I, that would probably be just regular people coming in, not nothing. What if we rented it out to a community basketball league? Okay, then how, how often would that happen? Maybe one time deal? No, yeah. I would say often. Yeah, just often? Mm hmm Then you could probably set up a use agreement saying that we do lease it to, you know, basketball team. I would like to expand on that if you're done. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. If, because um, we haven't had a community center for 12 years, so we're looking at partnering up with other places. Okay. So it may be, you know, a theater, a gym, or, you know, or a youth program. So what does that look like when there's partnerships? Does that make any difference? Because... There's partnerships. You could also have a use agreement for that, and that'd be okay with. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Because all, all it would be is you're just saying, hey, you know what? We got a contract with these partners, and they're going to use it here and there sparingly. And as long as you just have that, you have an agreement with them. It's not going to be sparingly, though. It'd be a, constantly. Then. Yep. Okay. It would be a partnership. Okay. If, as long as you have, you know, a document in writing showing that. Okay. Okay, well, I just want to be upfront with it because it would be because we were looking at, you know, if something like this would happen, it'd be a partner with another group. Dan, you brought this up. What was in the use contract language that you were concerned about? You know, anytime that you start to accept grants, I mean, there's obviously different criteria that they, they have on there. Uh, one being, you know, just even in our construction and our bids, um, you know, the state of Minnesota requires prevailing wage um, to be paid. So there's prevailing wage checks and so forth that needs to be verified. Um, there was just some uh, use con uh, contacts, uh, contracts. Uh, <clears throat> it just... Just an interesting piece it comes down to a definition. There's not a definition in the agreement. The very first one, Section 8, talks about the purpose of which the use contract um, was entered into must be a governmental purpose. So it really comes down to what's the definition of a governmental purpose. Um, and so some of the um, items that have been described just want to make sure that those are acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And then um, just trying to close all the loops so we don't um, get them to... There's, uh, because this grant is in excess of $200,000, Section G talks about, then it must contain a provision requiring the UCE to list any vacant or new positions it may have with the state workforce centers, as required by Minnesota Statute 116L66, Subdivision 1. Um, so, again, that's a different criteria than we've ever had in any type of a use agreement, and it's kind of more or less wanting to know how, you know, strict the, the state is on, on some of those components to it. No, as long as you provide up front a, you know, that you're going to have partners and um, different uses and that you're leasing it out to different people, yep, that's all we want to see. Yep. Perfect. That's it. 
And then I just have one final question, and it, and it really goes to when we describe the categories of architectural construction that are done, and we put in dollar amounts onto it. I'm assuming there's a flexibility in there that we can um, adjust those numbers as long as it doesn't exceed the $4.5 million? Yes. And that's more or less with the budget because, yep. like I was also had mentioned to Brian earlier when we briefly discussed it, because you're going to meet with architects, construction people, and they're going to give you quotes. So typically with your budget, you're going to have a feel for what the numbers are going to be once you've met with these different people. Now, if you have to change something around, by all means, do it. But when you first send it to us, that's what we're going to go by. And again, it could be a situation if the construction is 500,000, uh, renovations 4 million. I'm just throwing numbers together here. And we're going to look at it as $500,000 worth of construction is going to come in, and we're going to count it down until it's down to zero. And then the renovation, if it's $4 million, count it down until it's zero. Questions for you? Nope. Okay. That's good. As far as you, Dan, as far as when we would do that, does the reimbursement part of it, was that something you understood before, too, that we'd have mm -hmm. to have the money up front? Yep. Okay. Yeah, and so, you know, eventually it would require a temporary loan from, what, you know, from a funding source, um, you know, whether it's general fund or something. Um, and, again, based upon the reimbursement methodology in which they're using, if they're, if they're uh, really reimbursing within a month, month and a half, you're probably not going to have your next pay application. That's assuming that you bid the whole job out together, so you really shouldn't run into much of a cash flow issue. Um, so, yeah. Because what I've always seen, um, just my experience of dealing, being on the other side like you guys are, when I was working with you, typically when I went ahead and requested the reimbursements, it would take... I look more on the two and a half, three weeks just to be safe. It's pretty much a strong number. The very first one, when you're first doing it, that one seemed like it's the longest, but after that, everything pretty much stays in rhythm. Once you send it, we're going to send it back out. And I think the beauty with government and nonprofits and even some of the profits, when you Every time you get an invoice, you can send it in. So typically, when I did it, it was only once a month. But I think when you get, uh, I think, I know, when you guys get invoices, if you got one on every two weeks, send them to me, and I'm going to turn around and just process them. Thanks again, Randy, for coming. Thank you. Appreciate it. Short Thank, notice. You for information. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think I still got it a little bit. I wasn't as nervous. <laughs> well, you did good. That Toastmasters did pay off. You did mm. great. Continue? Yes, please. please. Well, that was very informative. Uh, it was very good to, to hear that part to it. Uh, some of the other items, and again, it's up for discussion for uh, City Council whether you want staff to look at these um, different options. Um, uh, I think they may be important um, to help you uh, make a decision. Uh, the services and importance uh, of a library in North St. Paul. Um, examine current and future lease options for a library. Uh, interest in selling the community center, um, costs to vacate the community center, um, interest in partnerships at the community center, uh, services to be provided at the community center, uh, costs to operate the community center now and in the future, and financial scenarios and potential impacts. <clears throat> Some of the, you know, options, you know, I mean, just at a very high level, I mean, you have the option you could sell, um, you can demo. Um, you can leave as is. You can accept the grant in the current site. 
Um, uh, we just heard you could actually accept it, um, the grant and uh, seek legislation to go maybe potentially to a different site. There's a couple of, of sites that uh, are city-owned property that may um, have some other future um, benefits for the city. Um, this, the, there's a the site on Market Street across from City Hall um, that could be beneficial. Um, 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 there's also on 7th Street between uh, Sidewinders and uh, um, the, uh, I don't know the exact name, the tattoo place. It's a city property that may end up being a nice location. Those are just options that are thrown out. Um, obviously, it's up to uh, City Council whether uh, you want to look at any of those options. Um, but uh, we definitely can have further discussion on to that. Um, <clears throat> if you are interested in gathering some of this information, we would need to have direction or authorization for staff to um, like issue an RFP for the sale of the community center um, just to find out if there's any interest at this current moment um, regarding the sell. Um, uh, you could authorize staff to issue um, <clears throat> an RFP to find out if there's some partnerships um, for the community center um, to look at uh, partnerships as far as um, looking at occupying space and pr providing programs to the to um, the community center um, and, or other um, components to it. Um, if we were looking at <clears throat> to um, vacate uh, some of our components that are in the community center, we would have to look at some costs for re relocation of the generator, relocation of the fiber. Um, and if we decided um, to uh, look at demoing the facility all or all but the library space, some of that information may be beneficial in your decision-making process. Again, it's totally up to you. Um, uh, just looking for uh, city council's direction on, on what they would like to, uh, to, to look at in, on, on those pieces. Um, <clears throat> I think it's beneficial um, for um, the City Council to hear from Ramsey County Library. Um, and so in our next uh, meeting, uh, the first workshop in April, um, we do have the Deputy Director um, of the North Saint, or of the Ramsey County Library, uh, Pang Vang, who will be here in attendance to talk about some of the, the programs and services that they're providing um, today um, and, um, and looking at what the, the future for the library looks like. Um, in the city of North St. Paul. Um, they have a tremendous amount of uh, demographics um, that they can share with us to show some of the, um, you know, diverse, um, the diversity in our, in our city and, and how they're helping provide services to, to them. Um, again, if the city council is not interested in that, we, we certainly can, can cancel that. Um, it really gives, um, you know, the, opportunity now for City Council to to um, talk about um, some of the items that <clears throat> you know as far as staff to put some financial information together we we really need to have a good discussion on um, instead of just the the high level description that's in uh, on the the state uh, legislation is what are those services um, you know who, who would provide those services you know is that a staff uh, city staff providing it or is it partnerships um, and then um, start to look at what are some of the potential revenue sources so we can actually do a, a good analysis and be able to provide that information to city council to make a, a good decision for the city. Um, so with that um, it's really um, open right now for city council if we agree to that format the city council will have some an opportunity for some questions and comments. Um, and then if City Council um, is open to give uh, the public an opportunity to give some comments on um, tonight's uh, workshop. I have a question. So um, a lot of the inquiries are around um, finances, which obviously will be a huge factor in this. Um, is there um, an ability for us to look into the impact of how it will um, impact the residents in terms of um, their well-being, their health, how they integrate into the community, all of those things. A community impact assessment, is that feasible? Um, I can't give 100% answer um, to that. I, I 
think that there's probably some sort of way that's really not on a financial um, standpoint, but um, definitely we could we could try to make some sort of assessment with that. And that's why I think part of the benefit of hearing from um, the Ramsey County Library, um, Ramsey County as a whole has made a, a lot of huge initiatives um, trying to make um, equality, um, trying to help uh, in, in reducing um, concentrated areas of poverty and they have a lot of demographics and they, they've put a lot of funding forth. Um, they've got a different type of service model, um, some of which you'll hear about that the Ramsey County um, Library here in North St. Paul actually provides. Um, that is helping our community um, and so there are benefits. And, and I think Council Member Wong, what you're getting for is that, that there may end up being a cost that's associated with this um, community center for the city, but the benefits may definitely outweigh that, that cost. Um, and that again is we'll try to do the best that we can, um, but part of that is a subjective kind of sense and feel, but that's definitely the city council's final decision on. Thank you. I have a question about clarification, and I'm not sure. Um, are we allowed, this has said that we're, um, for the workshops we can do public comments. Are we allowed to accept public comments for a workshop or no? I've heard conflicting answers. As we've gotten clear from the city attorney is if it is only for the community center, then we can if we have time for that here, or they can also do it at the three minutes that we can allow in the council meeting itself but uh yeah if we have time we can certainly bring some people up i also have a question in terms of the rfp um would we be looking at an rfi or request for information prior to an rfp we certainly can yep that would probably be the wiser um approach to this yes thank you Well, like, are, are, we are there any the questions? First? That's what I think we're waiting for. Any more questions from council? I have no more questions at this time. Um, this is a continued ongoing. We have multiple meetings ahead of us. So um, for me, from a discovery standpoint, tonight it was very important to, to hear and, and we'll have more questions moving forward from that side. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Do you need more clarifications from that list that you read off from us? Is that what is your the staff's agenda? What is it to have us help us move forward on this? Well, is is you know on on the the slide uh, that has the authorization to staff? Um, you know, are, are we looking at <clears throat> some sort of RFI or or that on on in any interest within uh, somebody purchasing the community center? Um, partnerships, programming uh, for the community center, um, and then looking at um, developing costs related to um, moving some of our, I think, our infrastructure that um, is located in the community center. Um, is that uh, of interest, and, and would you like staff to move forward in trying to gather some of that information? Obviously, whatever information is is brought forth, will, you know, that we gather will be brought forth to city council's consideration. So part of it was next the meeting is going to be the library to speak, so that's going to check that box. Yep. Correct? correct. Is there anybody else that has any on this list here that they want to discuss to be able to help the staff gather? I mean, I think one thing would be um, really critical in what I heard last time is community engagement. When, um, so if we could have some dates out there set to go and our residents can be well aware of when those are, then we can um, certainly have the time to also engage um, community members um, even outside of this meeting. Absolutely. 
interested in partnerships or people interested in partnerships? Mm -hmm. Very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just read off a few of these things so we can take them off the list. Interested in selling the community center? Anybody? No. No. Not unless it's going to produce another community center. I would like the information, but I don't know that is fair to companies to, to go through the work of putting in a, a estimate if we're not serious about selling it. So, so to, to me, that's at this point, a, I think a little bit cart before the horse. Yeah. For my for my quick answer was along the same line as yours. It just there's far too much information to gather yet before. You know, we we even get to the to the sale of the building itself for for me. Well, that's why I just want to because right now I think the way we left it, the staff is still not. So if we can just kind of check off a few things, so yeah. we can help them out. So when they come back, they have a little guidance. Vacate the community center. As far as that, that's something we can wait till after. It's not the top on prior on somebody's mind right now. Okay, partnerships we're good with. Services provide I, <clears throat> myself to run our own community center. I don't have any like that. To me, it has to be a partnership with. I think it would be nice to hear public input on mm -hmm. that. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the services that our city is providing. It could be whatever else is in, whether the library has. Oh, well, that's partnership, yeah. yeah. But it goes hand in hand with the services. Okay. Well, does that help a little bit more? Yes, it does. Thank you. One comment I would like to make as we're going down this list, I have concerns about engaging Wald to do more work um, without an in-depth conversation of their work prior to engaging them for more. When I looked at prior things, um, Wald said on the October 4th, 2022 um, council, or I'm sorry, I don't know if it's council or workshop, but the timeline they had set up was a council approval for May 2023. Um, and I'm not seeing two years worth of work that they presented in our last meeting. So I, I'm wondering if they're the right fit for us about um, if, if we want to engage someone, I, I'd like a long conversation before we just automatically pick them. Also, is Craig Waldron still in charge of this as far as hired for this project? Because we have not seen him or heard from him. He's kind of stepped back from that, yes. So is he? But he was there early on with some of the meetings. He was going to try to be here tonight. Is he going to have a, uh, a handoff to what he's found as far as to us then? He will. Okay. Uh, he had medical issues this week, so he wouldn't able to attend. Okay. So the, he's not going to be, but we're going to get a handoff. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Just a little bit of information. It would be uh, for the dollar amount of an architectural engineering contract that you would end up needing for this next phase of actually doing the design, building the specifications for like the mechanical work and all that stuff, uh, you would require going out for an RFP um, and um, proposals would be received and then there would be a staff recommendation to city council. So it, it, it really, it can't be just handed to Wold um, they would have to meet whatever criteria is in the RFP and be the, the, the best selection for the city. And part of this reading through, too, we started at $2 million originally when they started the project. Then it went to four and a half. Now we're at 7.3. So, okay. Anything else for the council? We can... We're going to go forward with getting some more information and keep the other options on the back burner until we gather more from the community and um, partnerships. Am I correct on that right. statement? Please. Yep. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Do you want to? We do have 18 minutes. Open up the public? So, yeah, if we, we got can. enough time. Army? Okay. Yeah, Very. And you can go next. 
You asked me already? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Carrie Bleese, North St. Paul resident. I live at 2887 Lake Boulevard. Thank you for providing more information. I really appreciate that. Um, thank you to Mr. Is it Robbins for coming tonight and describing some more about that deed um, appropriation grant stuff because it's, it's big. It really is. You guys are asking some really good follow-up questions. We need that. We really need to know what are we in for? You know, is, this, is the community center in a place that we like it? Do we love it there? You know, is it worth fixing? Is it not worth fixing? How do we know unless we ask? So I appreciate you being open-minded to looking at, you know, requests for information from a variety of sources and looking at what's best for North St. Paul. And we don't want to saddle our kids with, you know, some beam off of a building that doesn't work. Like, here we are all these years later with our 1992 building that's just not been working for us. Mm -hmm. So... Let's not repeat history. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Gary. Three minutes, so we want to go next. Name and address, please. Welcome. Hi. Good to see you. you. Yeah, good to see you, too. I, I'm new to this, so I apologize because I'm not very good at it. So my name is Stacy Maher, a former Arts and Culture Commissioner and resident at 2467 15th Avenue East. Mirmangi, the council members, thank you for allowing me to speak today. I value the process of information collection and I just want to start out by, by echoing that. Families do bring money to our community in so many different ways and attracting families drives up housing competition, boosts financial support for our schools, pumps money into our businesses. Families are important and a core function in our North St. Paul community. We have parks but we lack an organized city-supported space for community to gather, a non-denominational building that provides solace for a variety of programs to serve the young and the old. North St. Paul lacks a hub for culture. We lack a hub for year-round community. As a new resident in 2015, I was so excited to visit the North St. Paul Community Center. Little did I know it wasn't there to serve me at least in ways that were tangible beyond a library. <sighs> so when the chatter to refurbish and refinish this community center began again a couple years back, I was ecstatic. Like, finally, in a town where 60% of our budget is allocated towards public safety, investing in a community center will provide more than its costs as what it provides is invaluable. Community, much like safety, is priceless. For those of you who are new to council, let me remind you about the public town halls regarding this topic. We heard about the foot traffic an operational community center brings to our businesses. We learned about rental partnerships this building could generate. We learned about the deep need for youth to have a place to go after school. Please, from parents, for your help. Selling this property is misguided. It's in harsh mis misalignment with what our current residents and future family residents need. So I ask members of the council to invest in the North St. Paul Community Center for our youth, for our families, for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I am Emily Hagwin. I live at 267 7th Avenue East. Um, <clears throat> I'm here to speak to you about a cause that is important to the well-being of our community, the launch of a new community center. As we look around our city, we see a vibrant tapestry of families and diverse groups that make up the fabric of North St. Paul. Yet amidst this rich diversity, there's a crucial need for a central hub, a place where residents can come together, connect, and thrive. That place is a community center. Um, first and foremost, a community center serves as a unifying force, bringing together people from all walks of life. It transcends socioeconomic barriers, cultural differences in age, and divides, um, age divides, fostering a sense of belonging and inclusivity. Um, one of the most compelling reasons to support the establishment of a new community center um, is the proven ability for these centers to reduce crime and foster a sense of security. By providing a central space for residents to gather 
and engage in a positive activity and build relationships, we create a strong sense of community ownership. Research has consistently shown that communities with active and well-utilized community centers experience lower crime rates as they become less susceptible to negative influences and more resilient against criminal activities. Moreover, a community center serves as a beacon of attraction for potential new residents. Um, I'm a semi-new resident. I moved here in December 2020, and since then I've become a mom, and the idea of having a community center for my son to utilize growing up here is uh, very exciting to me. Um, in today's landscape where families and individuals are seeking not just a place to live, but a community to belong to, amenities like a community center can make all the difference. Um, additionally, a community center serves as a space for youth. Um, it provides a, space, a safe haven where they can engage in constructive activities, learn new skills, and receive guidance from mentors and role models. By investing in our youth through the establishment of this new community center, we are investing in the future of North St. Paul. Um, so it's, I just want to say that it's not, to, to a lot of the citizens, it's not just about the money. Um, it's about investing in the heart and soul of our city. Um, and by supporting the launch of this, we're not only enhancing the livability of North St. Paul, um, we can lay the foundation for an exciting future here. So I urge the council to wholeheartedly support the launch of this program. And additionally, I would like to suggest um, that... Uh, the city looks into community impact reporting. Um, community impact reports can include um, factors such as job creation, youth participation, and community engagement, and kind of assess um, the impact that that will have in, in the meeting on uh, a deeper level. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Council. My name is Tom Armitage. I live at 2584 Swan Avenue. Uh, I spoke at this podium this past uh, Thursday, I guess, and I'm just standing here right now to reiterate the interest I expressed at that time that Ashland Productions be considered as a, in partnership with the City of North St. Paul. We'd like to be part of whatever this turns out to be. And with the remaining two and a half minutes of our three, I want to introduce one of the founders of Ashland, and he's going to spend two minutes and just tell you about our youth programming, specifically how it involves some of the schools in the city of North St. Paul. So, Rob Sutherland, if you don't mind. Thank you, um, Mayor, Council Members. <clears throat> My name is Rob Sutherland. I'm the Artistic Director at Ashland Productions and one of the founders. Um, we already partner with schools uh, in District 622, Carver Elementary, we had 43 students participate this year. Um, Carver, Cowern, Richardson um, in North St. Paul. And then in the past, we've had Castle and Weaver. Um, this year, we're partnering with nine different schools uh, in the East Metro. Um, but we rehearse at their school and bring them to the theater. Um, we are a growing organization. We're 25 years in. Um, Good track record. We're as old as Google, just not as rich. Um, but we think we can be a great partner. Um, and I think the big question I think you need to ask yourself is who's going to run this space? Um, lots of people want to use it. Lots of people want to be there. And we're not asking for it for free. That is not what we're asking. So I think there was some miscommunication that I've heard throughout the community um, over the last couple days. But you need a partner who can help run a space like that. People are going to want to use it, but nobody's going to want to run it. We're running our space over at the Maplewood Community Center right now. And so we are looking to grow and expand. And again, we're looking to provide students, um, but we are a youth mentoring group that works with people of all ages. So we believe that we can provide something for your city to bring people into the town to not only utilize that space, but to be able to do some of the things that the other people have talked about by utilizing the businesses um, and the community. So we think we can be a great partner and a great asset to North St. Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, when you said expand, do you mean you're going to stay over at Maple There's Maple Wood too? We're, we're open. Our lease is up for negotiation in two years. Okay. Um, and so it may be a brand new home we're looking for, and that may not fit here. Um, but we are looking for options. Okay. So um, it, 
since COVID, many, many theaters have suffered and gone under. We've stayed around. We are, are growing again and rebuilding. Um, and we think that there's potential for growth or a move. Okay. So there's options. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Yep. Is there anybody else? Okay. <laughs> City Council, thank you. My name is Ben Jarman. I live at 2460 Skillman Avenue East, right down the hill, um, right over by the South Water Tower. That's kind of like how I divide up the town. Uh, take a second, everybody in here. Uh, and by the way, the, the public comments in here are electrifying. Um, and I'll say a little bit more about that in a second. Um, but take a second here to think about uh, how you learned how to read. When you were a kid, where, where was that? What, what space did you go to? Did you, did you read with your parents? Did you learn to read at school? I'm sure there's pretty much everyone in here can agree that some part of the reading that you know now uh, came from going, to, going down to the local library. Um, Personal story here, my kid's real old now, he's like 15, um, but when he was a little youngster over by that South Water Tower, the two of us, we'd trot on down to that library right over there at the community center and we'd grab books because we didn't have the money for books in mass quantities. We needed to get some access to some books and that's where we went, that's how we got those books. And now my kid, he's learning the way he needs to be because he's literate and um, people made that happen. The city, the, the people that live in this city made sure that that place was operational and it was going. And I'm not sure the tax impact to the community, but I thank the community for keeping that place going, whatever they had to pay in taxes. Now we don't go to the library anymore because my kid's an old, and, and, and uh, he's 15. Um, <laughs> but hearing, no yeah, hearing from... Uh, younger families in, in town and I'm seeing them walking around, I know they're going to be walking their kids down to that library to grab a, a little bag of books, take that back home and learn from those things. I want this city to be, to be as literate as possible because that's the, the, that's the quickest way that you could possibly get yourself to be a successful person in this world. And I want North St. Paul to be on, the, on top of that. So, you know, whatever is, is going on, whatever we're thinking, um, that library is a cornerstone of the city, um, whether you know you're going to it or not. We're making great citizens by utilizing that library. And quick shout out to uh, Ashland Productions. My kid went and participated in your shows for several years, even in co during COVID. Amazing program. So I hope it's successful for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. It. Anybody? We got five minutes. Anybody else want to? Are, are the two future mayors going to stay back there? They're, yes, they're not quite ready for their debut they're yet. They're not, yeah. <laughs> well, the way you hit that gavel, there was a few <laughs> PSI. <laughs> My name's uh, Andy Wise. I live at 2093 7th Street North. Um, I'm just going to be reiterating a lot of what you've already heard tonight, but I think it's worth hearing adding my name to the to the chorus here um three things like was just said the library incredibly incredibly important um it's my kids you know love getting new books the children's room there is amazing um all the staff there is amazing we've had such a good connection to the community there at the library and I hope that that can continue um, because of how important it is for, for our community. Um, second, the importance of a community center. It's been said already tonight many times, and I don't need to go over all the points, but um, it's the demographics of North St. Paul today are not at all what they were 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Um, a lot of the people you heard from tonight including myself or somewhat newer residents. I've been here for seven years. Um, and that's just going to continue changing and changing, and more and more young families are going to be here. Um, community Center is all about 
um, bringing not just the kids of the community together, but adults, um, and working together to, you know, for sports and theater and things like that. Um, and I wanted to come here tonight mainly on that point because I've, in a lot of the meetings I've heard previously, I think just simply because of the, the timing of when the meetings had to happen, it tends to curate the, the voices into kind of one camp because families can't be here at four o'clock to, to talk. Future mayors are here because we, we couldn't be home. Mm -hmm. um, so it's tough for us to get here and, and give you our opinions. And um, I just want to make sure that, you know, moving forward, um, that's taken into account. Um, and my last quick point is, um, you know, maybe the community center as it is, maybe it's not the right building. Um, when you look at all the competing community centers in, the neighbor, in our community around here, um, they're very new, very modern, very big. It's not necessarily something that we can do here, but, um, you know, maybe there is a better site that a, a more... Um, dialed in community center, modern community center could be um, built so that it's a little bit more uh, in line with what our community actually wants and will need in the future. So, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Nothing else? Oh, one more. Hey, my name is Jody McPherson. I actually live in Woodbury. I uh, the owner of a company called Inclusive Spaces. So we specialize in youth development, um, entities like yours co-creating spaces for young people. And the reason I've come today is to just chime in about that space. And in our experience, the community is the hub. The community center is the hub. And it has worked tremendously to develop young people. There's been a lot of conversation about the financials. I would um, urge you to look at that community impact, the social ROI that will come from that, things like reduced delinquency in young people. You have a population that is 25% young people under age 18 and 13% over 65. There is a need to develop that space for your young people. That allows the families to have that space, whether it is school, whether it is sports. Youth sports is a bigger business than the NFL there's an opportunity to develop a space there. There's partnerships in the space. When you look at the responsibility of running it, the responsibility of running it is just having the right hands to guide you to say, hey, here is what it is. Our framework designs that and says, hey, here's what it is. Here's what you're building, a space for people to belong. That's the common language. They want a place to belong. And if you start with that in mind and not the other detracting voices that are pulling you in different directions, you build something in your community where people can come to, where families will come in, where they'll spend more money, where they'll spend more time in an area and grow your city in a way that you couldn't even imagine if you're only thinking of it from a financial lens. So with that said, I'd love to have a, a deeper conversation about how to help you do that. We did it in, in Arizona. We've done it uh, with like the Maryville Revitalization Corporation, where it's collective impact. And it's not one person who is rowing the boat. It is a community center guided and run by the community. That's the solution to some of the challenges I think you're looking at. And we'd love to be part of that conversation. So thanks for allowing me to be here. And, and just to chime in on that piece, I think is important for your community. And I think from the voices, they're craving a place to belong for their families. Thank you. Thank you. We need to dismiss so we can start our meeting. Yep. Is there we, yeah, we have to. We have to lo motion to be done. So, do I have a motion? <laughs> I motion to be done. done? I like yours, Mr. <laughs> Council Member Cole. Another be done. Second. Second. <laughs> Council Member Norby. All those in favor, say aye. 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 We're done. I need now it starts. Right to give up. give a few minutes oh, for us to run a bathroom break. Let's do the uh, six thirty-five. Give us four minutes. <laughs>